All right, it looks like Haley Baumgartner, uh, Trump's, I guess, chief communication person, clearly heard and understood her marching orders. Here she is on an interview with Tamron Hall, basically doing exactly uh, what uh, Trump was reported to have ordered his surrogates to do. Thank you very much. And Haley Baumgartner is the senior press representative for the Trump campaign. She joins me now. Haley, thank you for your time. Thanks for having me, Tamron. Good to be here. So, Corey Lewandowski uh, told NBC News that the report from Bloomberg Politics is not accurate. Uh, clear up then what happened on that call. Did Mr. Trump uh, tell surrogates that they should go after the judge even harder to keep up the attacks? Look, the premise of the call was for Mr. Trump to thank, you know, his surrogates, his supporters, leadership of the campaign um, for all our hard work uh, now that we're concluding the primaries today and to talk about, you know, the shift to the general election. And, you know, a lot of uh, questions and points were brought up by uh, people who dialed in and it covered a various, various topics. So it was a very productive call, but uh, no, that was not the tone of the call or the, or the premise of the call whatsoever. It may not have been the, the entire... Okay, notice she said tone and premise. She did not dispute the fact that that's what happened on the call. You have to listen very carefully to the words that they use. The goal of the call, but did those things happen? Did Mr. Trump tell the surrogates to keep up the attacks against the judge? No, I happen? think that... No, the, what, the, uh, what, what I think uh, is happening at this point is, you know, clarification because uh, this has been so unfairly played out in the media. And the fact of the matter is... So is, what did he say? Uh, the, 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 what did he say? I'm getting to that point. I'm getting to that point. Um, what was discussed was, and after many people brought up the subject, um, is that, you know, the lawyers, the original lawyers who represented the original plaintiff, who's no longer the plaintiff, uh, who had great reviews about Trump University, uh, uh, Mel Weiss and uh, Bill LaRock, who both have served time in jail, mind you, for fixing cases and have direct ties to the Clintons, uh, have paid uh, upwards of $600,000 for speeches. And Okay, it looks like they all got fed their talking points because she's filibustering the answer. Other things, um, you know, um, talking about their political motivation and painting Mr. Trump as a racist, which is complete, completely inaccurate. He has hired uh, Hispanics, African-Americans, uh, in many of his businesses for... Okay, so you mean to tell me that racists don't hire uh, people that they're racist against uh, in this world, which is a bunch of crap. You know, a lot of times a racist will hire someone in order to uh, perpetuate uh, their racism uh, by word and deed directly against the individual. So that argument's not flying. For a very long time. So uh, just I think that the goal is we want to, you know, clear up the, uh, the, the liberal media hype that is uh, yeah. unfairly portraying the whole situation. But what you've just done and take three of this question is not answer it, and then you threw out accusations of people having criminal backgrounds. So I'll ask you a direct quote from Bloomberg Politics. It says here that Donald Trump went after members of his own team. He says, are there any other stupid letters referring to the letter telling surrogates to back down that were sent to you folks? There's one of the reasons I want to have this call, because you guys are getting sometimes stupid information from people that aren't so smart. He was referring to, according to the source, his own campaign team, members of the team. Did that happen? Well, I don't know who that source is, but, you know, I, I was on that call, uh, you know, and I am certainly involved in the talking points and, uh, you know, being on the record and, and traveling with Mr. Trump, and that was not the tone, and, and those were not things that were said. Again, the point was to clarify any confusion that any of the surrogates or the supporters uh, may have, um, again, because of the hype and the uh, un unfair portrayal of this case in the media. You know, Mr. Trump has a right to a, a fair judge and to an impartial judge, and by the way this is uh, being played out, you know, he he's not he's not guaranteed that so um yes part of the the questions that came up from the from people calling in were clarifications on that and those clarifications were made as those points were, were brought up so when jan brewer according to the report interrupted the team and said that she would received an email asking surrogates to stop talking about the lawsuit did that happen I don't recall that happening, and that's not an email that I received. But you were on the I do call, receive right? certain emails. Yes, I was on the call. That's absolutely okay. correct. So then, according to the report, Donald Trump then said, take that order and throw it the hell out. Did that happen? 
Again, as I'm saying to you, I was on the call. No, that did not happen. That was not the intention of the call. The intention of the call was to clarify any miscommunication but that, that has been played uh, through the media about this case, which has been done so very unfairly. Um, according to the New York Times today, Donald... Okay, before we get to, to this part of it, so she's basically saying that the Bloomberg report is a 100% falsehood. So that, in fact, would give uh, Trump grounds to sue for liable. Let's see if uh, any such uh, lawsuit ever gets either mentioned or filed. And I doubt it. This lady is lying. Trump's attorneys and Donald Trump back in 2008 and 2010 went after two other judges that uh, Mr. Trump accused of being biased involving cases with Trump University. One of the judges was an African-American man. The other was a white woman. And they turned, uh, according to the report, angry accusations into an unusual elbows out legal campaign to remove not one, but two New York judges who oversaw the lawsuit. So this by the count now is the third judge, one an African-American man, the other a white woman, now uh, someone, as Donald Trump said, of Mexican background, but he's from Indiana. You have Hillary Clinton saying at this point, I imagine he'll only want uh, judges that identify with him. Does Donald Trump believe the only people who can be fair to him are white men of German heritage as his mother? No, and again, you know, that's media, uh, and he's being painted completely and fairly. He, you know, Mr. Trump has employed, and I'm going to go back to this fact, because, you know, this is absolutely ridiculous. He's employed women, he's employed African Americans, he's employed Hispanics in his businesses, uh, you know, for, for long periods of time, thousands of people. He is one of the, the biggest hearted individuals, you know, that, that you could meet. But however, you know, everyone it, it, through the courts, uh, it has the right in this wonderful country that, that we live in to a, a fair trial and to an impartial judge. And so when you're going through the court systems and, you know, you are, uh, you know, going through the legal channels, you have the right to do things legally and what makes sense for your legal strategy uh, in order to make sure that you have those rights, you know, guaranteed to you. She is absolutely correct about that. But the one thing about the legal system is you have to have a basis for your arguments and that basis cannot be race related, which I, I said it before, say it again, Trump wants to get out of running for the presidency and they are continuing to stoke the fires of the one thing that will disqualify him. So as just you just heard. This is the third time that Trump has gone after a judge, so, and he basically has gone after three of the major groups. He's gone after a Hispanic in this case. He's gone after an African-American male in a previous case. And he's gone after a woman. So pretty much the only uh, people left are white males, uh, Asians, or Native Americans. Uh, and he probably uh, wouldn't want the Native Americans or the Asians to uh, to judge him either. So um, I, this is just being totally misconstrued. Uh, it's totally unfair, and quite frankly, it's not fair to the American so, viewers for this to be painted this way. So did the did Donald Trump have two other judges? Um, who oversaw the lawsuits, these cases involving Trump University, one an African-American man, the other a white woman, um, removed from these cases. Is that an accurate report from the New York Times? I'm not aware of those cases specifically, so I can't answer if that's accurate or inaccurate. But what I can say is it, it, it should not even be pointed out if those judges were a woman, an African-American, whatever heritage, background, ethnicity, well, race, they may be. That's an no. That see the problem now see now they want to have it the other way Trump points out that uh, he's got a problem with this judge because he's a Hispanic but now he's telling the media that uh, it's wrong to point out the uh, racial or sex of uh, judges that uh, Trump successfully had removed from uh, prior cases he's trying to have it both ways do you believe it's fair that it's brought up well, if it's irrelevant, why did the candidate bring up the heritage of the judge from Indiana? Why did that he do was that? Brought up because this judge is part of a group that is for pro-illegal immigration. Mr. Trump has taken a very public... That's a lie. She's trying to bring in 
the La Raza organization, which the judge is no longer a member of. Now, yes, as an attorney, he was a member of the group, but once Arnold Schwarzenegger appointed him as a judge in the state of California, he had to leave that group. And then when Obama appointed him as a federal judge, he damn sure couldn't be a member of that group. So you're talking about a previous affiliation, just like uh, if that judge had been a Boy Scout. The Supreme Court has ruled that judges cannot even uh, be affiliated with the Boy Scouts. So you're trying to damn him for his history of being a member of a group which is now uh, pro, I guess you want to call it Mexican illegal immigrant, I don't know. But, and you also want to damn him because his parents were Mexican immigrants. So you're, just, you're basically just pile, you know, piling up bullshit and Trump is trying to use this can his campaign in order to affect a decision that he's facing in a civil matter. That in itself is immoral, if not illegal. Stance um, in terms of wanting to build a wall and address our immigration problem, and that's why it's brought up because he feels that the judge could be biased in terms of this being an issue, and that is 100% correct. Just, just quickly here, one of the attorneys for Donald Trump. Daniel Petroselli, who just got an interview that he did back on May 6th, where he said, we're not seeking to recuse the judge. If you're not seeking to recuse the judge, is this then just bluster an opportunity for the candidate to bring up um, the judge's Mexican heritage to stoke the fires of his base? If the goal is not to recuse, why then bring it up? Well, I, you know. Now here comes the, here comes the next lie. We weren't the ones who originally brought this up in the press. This was brought up by the plaintiffs. And as they continue to stir momentum, you know, this is where it ends up. So again, uh, being unfairly painted through the liberal media. And so what we're attempting to do now is clarify and, and present the totality of the situation. Okay, well, to clarify, it was not the media who brought up the heritage of the judge. It was the candidate on multiple times that's been documented, but thank you for your time. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so it much. It was the plaintiffs who, who brought it up, but yes, you're welcome. Thanks for your time. We'll have much more. Tamron, you don't let them get the last word. It was Trump that brought it up, and even as she's leaving, you need to make sure that you reinforce that point and you let her get away.